I'm aiming part two. This lesson is about how to make the I'm aiming strategy a part of our everyday life in a way that will put us on track to making those dreams of the future a reality. This is a very practical lesson. I'm going to share with you some ways of helping you identify your dreams, those desires of your heart that are most important to you. I call those dreams magnetic dreams because they have a pull to them that cannot be ignored. And these kind of dreams are the most important dreams that we have. Once we've identified those magnetic dreams, we'll look at an example of how to set meaningful goals to keep us on the right track towards those dreams. So let's begin with what I call the 50 list. If I asked you to write out a list of 50 things you'd like to do or achieve over the rest of your life, a few things might spring to mind immediately, but it may take you a while to get into the swing of things and come up with a list of 50. This isn't a test, it's simply to help you start thinking about the life you desire. And don't worry if it seems a daunting task, simply have a list there that you can add to when things come to mind. So, for example, your list might look like this. I want to own a Ferrari. I've always wanted to visit the Eiffel Tower. I want to learn to speak Italian. I want to see Niagara Falls. I want to stay in a snow hotel in Norway. I want to swim with dolphins in Tahiti. I want to write a bestseller, etc, etc. So this is a great exercise because it gets us thinking about life beyond where we are now as we start to explore possibilities for our tomorrows. To go back to camera talk, it's like looking at your life through a wide angle lens. You get an overall picture, but there's not much detail there yet. Now, although it's great to have these kinds of goals, they aren't really dreams, at least most of them aren't. A few, maybe only one or two scattered amongst your list, have a really strong connection with your heart. And I suggest that the most important thing you can do in your life right now is to identify those few things and throw the rest away. Take this approach with your list. If you had to choose just two things, more than likely you'll be able to identify them very quickly. As you wrote them down, you probably found yourself thinking more about those than the rest. Here's two ways to identify meaningful dreams. So with your 50 list in front of you, it's now time to ask yourself some questions. Start at the beginning of the list and one by one ask yourself these questions. Could I go through the rest of my life without this? If it's yes, then move on to the next goal. Does it pull me? Is there an inexplicable attraction there that goes deep? Do I fear it? Is this something that I know means stepping out of my comfort zone and changing the way I live? Fearing a dream is often a good indication that it's meaningful to you because you know there is a price to pay. Once you've been through your list and asked yourself these questions, hopefully you've cut them down to maybe six or seven and you can ask yourself this question. Is this a worthy dream? If I were to be known for one thing in my life, would I want this to be it? The next thing to do is to rate those remaining dreams in order of importance. After going through this exercise, you may only have two or three dreams on your list that you can really identify with. Allow yourself to be drawn by those dreams, even if right now you don't know how they're going to come about. So for instance, one of those remaining dreams on your list is to visit the Eiffel Tower. And you feel an attraction there. Yay! Yeah, the Eiffel Tower, I've always wanted to go to France, I've always wanted to spend some time there, get to know the place. Every time I see a picture of it or read something about Paris, I'm drawn there. 
that is something worth considering to be a real dream or at least a part of the vision of the life you desire deep down. If you consider dreams to be glimpses of your future but not the whole picture then you're on the way to identifying meaningful dreams. And this exercise doesn't end here. Once you've started to honestly identify those meaningful dreams, you need to make sure you don't let them drift away again. Make a time in your diary at least each week to pull out a notebook, sit down in a quiet place and write out a detailed description of your dream. And use these pointers. Write out your dream in the present tense. I am a writer. I have written two bestsellers. Include details such as where you are, who are you with, what do you spend your day doing, what does a typical week look like. Dream Tracks – How to Start on the Path to Your Dreams Today Here's an example of what I call dream tracking. So the dream is I want to be a professional writer. As soon as I've defined that real dream, I'm able to start doing something about it. So the first goal, that goal that's in line with my dream to become a professional writer, it would be to start building an outline or a framework by my next book. And that can start today. Once I sit down at my laptop and start, I'm on track. And tomorrow... I can carry on with it. That's not simply making myself do something. It's a change of mindset. It's what Stephen Pressfield in his book The War of Art calls turning pro. You decide today to take your dream seriously and that means that every day, come rain or shine, you do something about it. It's a matter of making sure that you incorporate your dream into your day. You'll give your dream credibility by working on it today. And in doing so, you give yourself credibility. It's a simple yet profound change from the attitude, oh, I'd love to be a writer. I've always dreamed of writing a novel. I just don't have the time. To, I am a writer. I put time in every day to work on my dream of becoming a professional author. In essence, the moment you make that switch, you've already become a pro. You may not be making money from your work yet, but you are doing the work. You're putting in the effort with a goal in mind. It is in reality only a matter of time. How much time, who can say? How much time and effort can you put in each day? That's a question that only you can answer. But I look at it this way. I can't afford not to put the time in. This is my dream that I'm talking about. It deserves my attention. It deserves my time. Once you get started, it's a matter of staying on track and knowing where you're headed, what your immediate goals are. And I always recommend looking at three-month goals, one-month goals and week goals, especially if dreams and goal setting feel overwhelming to you to begin with. So staying with that aspiring author, her three-month goal may be to have the introduction and the first chapter of her book written in draft form. Her month goal would be to complete the introduction. Her goal for this week would be to complete the framework or overall plan for the book. That goal for the week is the immediate destination. And there'll be another similar goal for the next week to keep her on track towards getting that introduction written out. And with those immediate goals in mind, it's then a matter of making today count towards them. And that's the fuel to take you forward. Every little bit of work you do today on your goal is fuel. Every minute spent planning, every moment spent learning, every second tapping away at that keyboard is one step closer to making your dreams a reality. In making your dream a priority, you're taking a huge step away from leaving your life to chance and towards a life of design and intention. 
And to go back to that first step of the Making Today Count program, this is what makes it so much easier to jump out of bed in the morning with an oh yes. Why? Because every single day you know you're on track. You know you're moving forward. You can see the results taking shape before your eyes. This is not magic. It all springs from a decision and it's fueled by commitment. 